on this episode, I'm going to share with you my five biggest tips for changing your mental mindset when it comes to starting a new diet. So you overweight, you feel tired, tired of being tired, or you're just lost in the world of nutrition. Stay tuned. Bring in the intro. What's up, everybody? It's your man, Pots and Pans. Today is a very exciting day because pretty much for the first time ever, first of many videos to come, I'm going to start to share with you a little bit about my nutritional mindset, how I view the world, and how I separate the wheat from the chaff. Is that the, that's the term? Sometimes we make it a little more complicated than it is, you know? So, daddy's got you. Without any further ado, let's get into tip number one. Get tested. Not for that, but also for that. That's probably a good idea too. What I mean is your biomarkers. Now allow me to paint a little picture for you. You're at home, feeling lazy, tired, you're eating a bunch of carbs, caloric surplus, and not enough nutrients, and you say, I'm gonna switch to the diet. Let me call the vegans out here. I got love for you gnocchis too, but I'm just gonna use this example. It's just an example. Because this happens a lot with vegans, I see. As you come off of this shitty American diet, the standard American diet, either way, it's very sad, which is in the caloric surplus and not enough nutrients, and then you start eating all these plants and fruits and vegetables, which are really, really good for you, nutrient dense, but the calories go from up here to down here. What happens? You start to feel lighter. You start to become less inflamed. The weight starts to come off. Obviously, you're gonna start to feel good. Now, does that mean that you're always gonna feel good? Who knows? Maybe. How do you know? You get tested. I'm talking about for micronutrient levels. Okay, so I always tell people that you should be supplementing the big ones that control the majority of your genetic real estate. So vitamin D3, magnesium, they're controlling thousands of your genes. C-reactive protein, these are inflammatory biomarkers. Check your triglyceride levels. You should check your hemoglobin A1C, which is like a three month average of your fasting blood glucose measurements. Cholesterol, this is a tough one. Honestly, most people don't understand it. A lot of doctors don't even understand it. A lot of people look at their total cholesterol levels and then just fucking go ape shit. It's a little more complicated than that. So you have to understand your LDL, your VLDL, which are the bad ones typically, and your HDL, which is known as the better cholesterol. Um, we'll make another video about that down the road. These individual cholesterol measurements are painting a way better picture than just one total number. Eating eggs isn't gonna kill you, okay? Eating animal saturated fat isn't gonna kill you unless you're highly inflamed, and you're eating a whole bunch of processed shit. It's very, very complicated. Um, these are very important because you want a baseline. You want a standard recipe so that you know down the road if this diet's actually working for you, or if it's not, or you need to supplement, how do you know if you don't get yourself tested, you don't. Just because you look good on the outside doesn't mean look good on the inside. Get tested. Tip number two, eat with your eyes first. Now a lot of you watching this probably like, doesn't even make sense. How am I supposed to eat with my eyes? What I'm trying to say is that plants and certain animal products are talking to us. If something is dark, deep, rich, beautiful in color, 99% of the time, probably gonna be good for you. Now, you're at home and you're saying, uh, chef, a lot of wild poisonous berries that are in the wild can kill us. They're dark, rich, and beautiful. What do you say about that? Um, it's not the color that's killing you, it's some other aspect of the toxin, which I don't know, because I'm just a chef and I make YouTube videos. Google it. What I'm talking about is the carotenoids that we got in sweet potatoes and carrots, the flavonoids like anthocyanins and dark berries, uh, quercetin that's in apple peels and red onions. These things are super nutritious and have many, many antioxidants. They're super good for you. And uh, the color is a clear indication. There's always gonna be outliers. Shout out to the guy in Into the Wild. RIP, but for the most part, if it's dark, rich, beautiful, handsome, shut up phone. If it's dark, rich, and beautiful, go and have a ton of newts. 
And as an added benefit, a lot of these things are coming with a ton of fiber. So you're gonna digest them into short chain fatty acids. It's super good for your gut, keeping that shit real strong you know and not to mention it's gonna keep you pooping every day drop a comment below how many times you're pooping a day too much too close not not comfortable grow up additionally the doctrine of signatures is something that i heard about first on ben greenfield's podcast and it blew my fucking mind what am i mumble rapper basically the concept that things in nature look like the things within us that are actually inherently good for so uh, walnuts. What does a walnut look like? If you said the Millennium Falcon, you're right, but irrelevant. What I'm talking about is your brain. Walnuts look like your brain. Guess what they have? Choline, omega-3 fatty acids. Super good for your brain. Hey, ladies, let me ask you a question. You, uh, you got ovaries? I know you do. Uh, you like avocados? You should, because they're good for your ovaries. Pomegranate seeds, good for your red blood cells. Tomatoes? Cut open a tomato, what's it got? Bunch of chambers, what else has a bunch of chambers? Your heart. Tomatoes good for your heart, chef? Yup. Now, how much validity is there to it? I don't know, is there some truth? Yeah, I don't know. Again, I'm a chef that makes YouTube videos. Google it. Tip number three. Never put Twinkies on your pizza. Just kidding, but don't do that. Either. Now, over the last couple of years, even if you don't know what it means, most people have heard the term intermittent fasting. It's made pretty popular by a lot of bro science people, but there is a lot of real science to it. Um, even bro science is real science because it exists, so joke's on us, I guess. What I want to talk about is something called time-restricted feeding, and I will point out a researcher by the name of Dr. Sachin Panda, or Panda, or... Now, as you may have heard, we evolved on this giant rock hurling through space, spinning around, and it gives us 12 hours of light, 12 hours of dark, because of the sun and stuff. Most people refer to this as a circadian rhythm. Um, people think we have like one. Oh, you got a circadian rhythm, it's just one. Um, yeah, we have a master regulatory clock called the suprachiasmatic nucleus. Say that 10 times fast. Superchiasmatic nucleus, superchiasmatic nucleus, superchiasmatic nucleus. Super Fuck it. What people don't know is that all of our organs kind of have their own clocks. And what I want to talk about specifically here is our liver. Now, when you eat anything, and this is a huge part of Dr. Sachin Pan, Pan, yeah, him. The biggest difference that I see between these two different things is that intermittent fasters care mostly about calories to break the fast. Whereas in with uh, time-restricted feeding, they're more concerned about anything exogenous that could be considered uh, xenobiotic, which is everything except for water. So if you take in coffee and tea, which would be okay for intermittent fasters, um, coffee and tea are xenobiotics, and what it's doing is sending our liver messages to start getting shit going for the day. Hey, start producing enzymes, start making energy. Most people wake up and the first thing that they do is eat. And then they eat all the way up until the time they go to sleep. Now there's a lot of things wrong with this. There's a lot of research that shows that time-restricted feeding will lead to longevity and is very, very beneficial for you, mainly for two reasons. So if you're eating all the time, your body's gonna use that food energy. It's either gonna use it or it's going to store it. And so if you're always giving it energy, it's just gonna keep storing and use what it's got. But we evolved to actually use what we store because we didn't always have food. We weren't always able to hunt. The winter came. We know what's coming with it. We can't face it alone. So that's why in the summer, you ate a bunch of berries, you loaded up on that fat, you know, and then you could survive off of that fat through the winter. It's just kind of like bears do. Remember, we're mammals. If you're constantly eating, you don't give your body a chance to tap into that stored fat as a fuel source. Additionally, if you give your body a break from metabolizing food all day long, you actually give it a chance to repair damaged cells, to get rid of anything that might be precancerous, to make new cells. If you don't give your body a chance to heal, you're gonna have a bad time. Maybe not tomorrow, maybe not next week, but years down the road, these things take time. Now, tip number four, use common sense, all right? So, let me paint another picture for you. If you're on a 2,500 calorie diet, it doesn't make sense to eat an entire 
454-gram jug of almond butter to get each and every one of those calories? No, it doesn't. Have I done that before? Yeah, I have. Do I struggle with my own things? Yeah, I do. Did I feel like shit afterwards? Yeah. Did I actually shit afterwards? Yes, I did. But guys, I'm not judging you. I'm trying to help you get off my d Don't. Don't be a nightmare. Additionally, does it make sense to wake up first thing in the morning when we're the most insulin resistant and chug a huge glass of orange juice? Some people might be good for that. I can't do that shit. Does it make more sense to wait till the latter part of your day after you had an intense workout and eat all that sugar the way sweet baby Jesus intended us to, wrapped up in this nice ball of fibrous matrix? Yeah, it does, okay? Most of these juices have more sugar than you should have an entire day or two days worth. It's insane. So much sugar. Might as well roll out of bed and drink a Pepsi. You know, Dr. Dr. Pib, Mellow Yellow, or a treat sarsaparilla. Shout out to my East Coast family. Your body doesn't know the difference between all that sugar and that orange and a fucking Coke. Now, processed foods. Let me ask you a question. Uh, why? Oh, you wanna have some ice cream? That's fine. Wild out, have a party. I don't care, but why all the ingredients? Cream, sugar, egg yolks, maybe a little salt. Throw some chocolate in that bitch. I don't care. But why you got the gums? Why you got stabilizers? Why you got pro oil? What? Processed oil? What the f is that doing in there? Nine times out of 10, you can't pronounce an ingredient? Put it back on the shelf. Know what these gums and stabilizers do. Know what these sugar-free replacements are and why they're actually worse than sugar. Why they break down your gut barrier. As much as you possibly can, go the whole foods route, you're gonna be fine. And last but not least, my fifth and final tip for changing your mindset on nutrition, write your own recipe. Guys, let me explain something to you. There's no magic bullet, okay? There's no one size fits all diet. You gotta put in the work. You have to understand these things. So just because somebody else is on a diet and it works for them, doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. Some people can handle dairy. Some people can handle gluten better than others. Some people are good on high carb, low fat. Others are good on low carb, high fat, like a ketogenic diet. But guess what? Some people might not be able to handle all that fat, okay? Some people might have a genetic variation, a polymorphism in a gene called PPAR alpha that is involved with fatty acid metabolism and absorption. And if they can't metabolize that fat, instead of losing weight on a ketogenic diet, it becomes an obesogenic diet. These things are all highly variable. Your body and your biology is variable to the next person, to even people in your family. The science evolves as you evolve. The food that you find in the grocery store, if it's genetically modified, that's playing a role. Ingredients that you put into your body are not only interacting and reacting with your biology, but they're also competing with other ingredients that you're putting in, other foods that you're eating. So these things are highly variable and it's really, really complicated. You have to figure out what works for you and write your own recipe. Two years ago, I noticed that I was like getting all this brain fog and I was forgetting things left and right. I had low energy and I started getting into all of this stuff, nutrition, dietetics, nutrigenomics, which is how your genes play a role with interacting with nutrition. I started to really deep dive into all of these things and then it really, it has changed my life. I'm significantly better than I used to be and smarter and well, debatable. But as far as mindset and energy and that brain fog, it's mostly gone. Taste, taste, taste. Try different diets and figure out what works for you. Like these things take a really long time for all this cellular turnover. If you've been eating a shitty diet for years, it's gonna take a while to, for all this stuff to get rid of, especially these hydrogenated processed inflammatory oils like canola, vegetable oils. These things don't just go away overnight. It's a long process and that's why I don't cheat a lot on my diet and I'm very strict. Do not headline read. Do not read in the newspaper, saturated fat is bad, coconut oil is bad, vegan diet is good or bad, ketogenic, same thing. You have to actually like read the fucking literature. I know it's hard, it's not easy, it's time consuming, but there's so many nuances and everybody's about clickbait titles now. So it's really, really important that you actually just don't take people's word for it and figure out what works for you. And please, 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 please do not calorically deplete yourself. If you're trying to lose weight, you need calories. You need to be eating the right amount of calories. So don't be scared of them. Do not be scared of fats. They're good, they're bad. Calories and fats are not created equal. Like a, if you buy a smaller cookie and it, oh, it's only 100 calories, 
it still matters what you're putting into your body. That 100 calories is not the equal to what a broccoli is or something else comparable, a nutrient dense vegetable. So consider that. Go online, there's basal metabolic rate calculators, and then if you're working out, just adjust, add some more calories. If you're not working out, change your protein levels, play with things all the time, journal, pay attention to how you feel before you eat a food or a specific meal, pay attention during or postprandial, afterwards, how do you feel? Do you have dip in energy levels? In the beginning of the day, do you feel better with carbs or should you wait? Should you wait until after your exercise? That works for me and it might not work for you. Pay attention to your energy levels throughout the day and how that interacts and how many hours you should be fasting. All of these things are highly variable and you have to pay attention to what works for you. Do not be afraid of calories. They're important, but they're not everything. Okay, so I know that was a lot guys. If you like this video, please subscribe, like, drop a comment below if you have any questions. If you wanna see more of these videos, hit that bell notification so every time I cook up a new one, you'll be notified. Come say what's up to Papa Gnocchi. Find me on everything at Real Chef Mikey. Shout out to my latest subscriber, Shaniqua Hampton. I appreciate you, girl. Welcome and congratulations on being the newest gnocchi to the pot. I'm tired. That was a lot. That was so much information, and it took way longer than just what I cut up. Tweet me at Real Chef Mikey for a shout out on my next video, or like me on Facebook. I'm investing a lot more time into that. So as always, thank you guys. I appreciate you so much, each and every one of you. Uh, that's all I got for you today. But uh, until next time, love, peace, and uh, bacon grease, manyokis. Chef out. What? <laughs> Oh, my God.